Okay, this is just a quick little update on my Coco Dev board that I've been working on. Um, as you can see from the screen, we're running Disk Extended Color Basic 1.1, and um, that is achieved by using the stock Coco ROMs and then patching them for some of the features that are related to this board. One of those features is the 80 column display, and another is the real time clock. Uh, from basic, I can look at the time string by simply print time string and I'll get a indication that it's February 22nd, 1920, or 2020 and the time is 10 minutes after midnight. Um, so this time string can be used from within any basic program. Now let's do a directory. This is a directory of drive zero. There's a thousand virtual floppy drives that are available. So I can mount any of the 1000 floppy drives to one of my four main DOS drives zero through three. So let's just try mounting drive 437 to drive zero. And if we do a directory, we'll see there's a little program called their DRV437.BAS. So I saved a single basic program to all of the virtual drives with the drive number embedded into the name just to demonstrate that indeed there are a thousand virtual drives. I could mount any drive. Let's say I want to mount drive 718. And then I do a directory and there's a program called drv718.bas there. So we'll go back to drive zero. And we'll just run a quick demo of the Towers of Hanoi program here. Just kind of give you an idea of what's going on with that. So uh, anyway, you get an idea of how BASIC works with the Coco Dev. So you can pretty much run uh, any BASIC programs that you would normally run. You'd normally be able to do things that you would normally be able to do on the color computer with the exception of graphics. This currently does not support any of the graphics command, but all the other BASIC commands are built in. Um, if you have a small application and you don't want to use the SD card, there's also 20 slots available on the flash chip for storing programs. So if I did a FDIR here, I would see what's on the flash chip, and actually it's empty right now. But if I, right now the Hanoi program is in memory, and if I F save, comma, zero, it's going to save that. Actually, I've got to give it a, a name. Now, if I do a directory of the flash, you see that I have the program there. There's 20 slots there on the flash chip, so if you, even if you don't have an SD card, you can save up to 20 basic programs on the flash chip on this. Alright, let's go ahead and boot into Nitrous 9. If I use the DOS command, that'll boot up and I've got a window here with a cyan background and black letters. There's also two other windows that were created. Uh, window 1, which is a green background and black letters, and Window 2, which is a yellow background and black letters there. Um, we can just do this, some of the standard commands from Nitrous 9, seeing that we have 376k available out of the 512k on the board, we can see that our real-time clock is working from Nitrous 9 by showing the time and the date. Um, we can look at another partition of SD1 where I put backups. That's a fairly large partition. In fact, if we do a free command on the SD1 partition, we'll see that it's about four gigabytes. There's 16 million sectors on there. Um, I also have a special 
device that I call FL0, which is the flash chip. So as you can see, I just have a fairly, in fact, if we take a look at the size of it, it's not very big. It's only 1,024 sectors, which amounts to 256K. But it's enough to put an install or rescue disk into the flash drive. So what that means is you can actually even boot OS 9 on this board without an SD card. You can boot it up. And uh, for instance, if you wanted to make a new install of Nitrous 9 on an SD card, you could boot it from the flash first, format your SD card, copy your files over to it, and then tell it go back to go back and boot from the SD card. So everything's working pretty well on it so far and just giving an update and uh, hopefully I'll have another video soon to show you some more features that I've added.